Thank you, my brother. The Lord bless you. Good evening, friends. It's a privilege to be here tonight in this uh, nice little comfortably looking church. And, and so I'm sure the Holy Spirit's here and he's, a, he's acquainted with all the crowd. So we're just glad to be here to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, enjoying this wonderful fellowship. <clears throat> so we are... Um, wants to announce that tomorrow night now is the, the convention starts tomorrow night over at the Ramada. I suppose the auditorium's right there with the... Uh, yeah, it's right there with the auditorium. Yes, sir. And uh, everybody that can come out to every service, I guess Brother Williams has gone through it and the procedure and told all what's uh, happened, all what's taken place and what is to take place as far as he knows what's yeah, to take yeah. place. <laughs> Because sometimes in these meetings, something takes place that we, don't, we just don't know. We're going over there looking for something to take place. And, and uh, the last time, we sure had a wonderful fellowship over there at the Westward Hole, I believe it was called, the Westward Hole. And now, as I guess it's been announced, that tomorrow night, our beloved brother, Oral Roberts, will be speaking tomorrow night, the Lord willing. And there will be many more there, and you'll go to hear some great speakers, some of the businessmen, ministers from all around. I hardly know any of the speakers that's advertised outside of Brother Gardner. And uh, I do know Brother Valma Gardner. And uh, so um, they've got now on until Monday night. So we're just expecting a great big spiritual gastronomical jubilee. <laughs> so we're coming and feast upon the things of the Lord. And now... I think it falls my lot for Sunday or for Saturday morning breakfast and for Sunday afternoon service, and so um, to speak. Now I want to say that this has been one of the most grandest times that I've ever had in Phoenix. Usually when I'm in Phoenix, I just get to maybe go into one place, but this time I think this is about six or seven, maybe eight places that I've been around through the Salt River nine. Nine places that I have been, nine different places. That's nine different ministers to get acquainted with, shake their hands, and uh, have fellowship with the different organizations. Why, well, usually when I come in, why, the brethren, they're always so nice and turn their churches loose and come in. I think it's good for, for especially evangelists who come in and, and put their time in to try to help each church than to go around and visit the churches like that because the pastor is always willing to cooperate and their people comes and gets maybe prayed for or something happened or someone gets saved and then he knows the person, the different ministers say, well, this brother so-and-so, if you're in that district, well, you go right straight to him, a wonderful man of God. I've been in his church and, you know, I, I like that. I think we get more acquainted with each other. And... Uh, because we're going to have eternity to span with each other, so we might as well get acquainted down here and know how it is. And so, so then up there, the one good thing, old brother pastor, we won't be just kind of, we won't have any prayer meetings. No, we won't have any uh, healing services. But we, and we won't have any time limit. <laughs> so I usually only preach six or eight hours at a time, maybe sometimes. So then I can just keep on. You know? <laughs> Oh, I want to talk to those I preach to then. I used to tell the people that I'd like to have at least a millennium with each one. See? And then when I get through and write in our own little services, just that I know it's been way in around two million or better converts to Christ. And no doubt a few of those are going to make it anyhow. And <clears throat> so uh, just to sit down and maybe say there'd be a hundred of them. Look what a hundred millenniums would be just to get acquainted with the people I led to the Lord. And then, you know, when I get on, I'm not going to have one less bit time than I did when I started. See? Eternity never begins, never ends. See? Never had a beginning, never has an ending. You can't explain it. But anything that had a beginning has an end. So you say, what about us, Brother Branham? Well, as long as you're natural, human of the earth here, you had a beginning. But if you're born of heaven, you're part of God then that spirit never had a beginning because it's part of God. It's eternal. That's the only way you can ever live forever is have eternal life. That's right. An eternal life. But anything that begins has an end. So if you had no beginning, the only way...
See there, Jesus said, except a man be born again of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. No wise can enter in because you've got to have that eternal life. Now, of course, I'm not, I hardly know how to speak English. No, I've studied a word or two when I find it, see what it was in the Bible, Hebrew and Greek. But the Greek word there for eternal life is the same word that's used for God's life, spelled Z-O-E, Zoe. And he that has eternal life is Zoe, God's own life that makes you his own son or daughter. See, because you're born of him. His life is in you, and you can no more perish than God can perish. So you got eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day, God says. Isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. I was thinking when God in the beginning, he spoke, and he said, Let there be, and let there be brought forth the seeds, everything of its kind. You can hybrid, of course, and turn it around as I preached here in Phoenix one time on, I believe, hybrid religion, <laughs> how that they try to interbreed it with denomination instead of letting it be like it was. But you let, uh, you let uh, a hybrid, anything that's hybrid cannot breed itself back. So when man tells you, and you children going to school, and they say that we come from a single cell and there are ethics of Darwin, he just doesn't know what he's talking about, see? Because... You take a horse and, a, and a, you take a, well, I say a, a donkey and the mare, and they have a, a colt, it's a, it's a mule. But that mule cannot uh, breed to another mule and have a mule. It finishes right there. Hybrid corn. You can hybrid corn, and then you can plant that corn. It won't be nothing. It won't be nothing. It has to come back. So how can then, if we begin on evolution from the single cell, then where are we at? See, their own scientific research proves they're wrong. See, uh, see, you can't do it. You can breed the blue violet or the white violet, get the African violet, but just leave them to themselves and they'll go right straight back to the original blue violet. That's right. See, it won't do it. So when God spoke and made man and man's soul was lost, it absolutely anything outside of that joining church and anything is high breeding. You've got to come back to God's got to speak the word back again. That makes it life. <laughs> when God speaks life into you, then that's eternal again. But until that, it's a hybrid condition, you see. So the devil mingled with it and mixed, tried to mix faith and something unbelief together so it makes a hybrid, see. And But when God speaks, and places the Holy Spirit in there and seals it, it's eternal. Amen. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, not the Holy Church of God, the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. And a seal represents a finished work. Nothing you see like you load a boxcar. You start loading a boxcar, used to work on the railroad. We would load in a boxcar different things, but the inspector comes around first. It's got to go over a lot of rough roads. If there's anything loose, you'll not seal it until that car is so loaded and compact till nothing can shake it. Then he closes the door and seals it, and it cannot be broken till it's at its destination. That's just right. God comes around and finds a lot of foolishness in us. He just don't seal it yet. Sees a lot of unbelief. He just don't seal it yet. But when it's all packed up with the full gospel, then he seals it. <laughs> That's right. Seals it till its destination. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Good. So glad tonight to know that I'm one of you. And I, when I was a boy, I always wanted people to love me. I was an unlovable person. I was kind of what's called the black sheep in the family. All of them drank, you know. But I always, as a, you've read my life story, no doubt. There was something told me there was a God somewhere, somewhere that I keep hearing a voice and something calling to me. And in the family, I was kind of the outcast. I went to school, same way, because it's a ragged, everybody made fun of me. And then when I become a minister, I believed that that word was the truth. Then I was an outcast in my Baptist church. They said, you'll be a holy ruler, some of these days. So then when I've come to find out there was somebody that believed it all like I did, it's just like putting a glove on a hand, just fit exactly. So then he said, if you'll forsake all and follow me, I'll give you mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, and so forth. Life eternal. So to come among you this way, I love you. Sometimes I preach pretty rough because I, I see that's somebody getting out of line. You see, you're supposed to do that. A real daddy will well, he'd shake you and say, here, get back here in line. If he's a real true father, 
So sometimes your pastor has to weigh down on something, just love him that much more because he's a real father to you. See, trying to keep you lined up because he's watching over your soul, which the Holy Ghost has made him uh, the overseer of the church. And um, you must always watch that. I pray that God will bless this little church and may it grow and prosper. May many fine uh, preachers come out of this church and go into the fields everywhere. And may its name be immortal is my prayer. May God bless its pastor, its deacon, its trustees, and its affiliation, whatever it is. May God be with all of you and all of its members as you labor and work together. I pray that the Holy Spirit will work with you, confirming the word with great signs and wonders to follow the believers who believe the word that's preached across this platform here. God bless you. Now, <clears throat> I'm a little hoarse. Brother Williams is just giving me a combing over. I told him I had it. I was going to Ajo and a few cities tomorrow. I'm trying to find a place to move to, out here in Arizona, to live out here. And then, in coming to Arizona, I wouldn't come and a precious brother the other morning after I preached on the royal sea. Now, I'm not a tape seller. You all know that. But the boy over here has got the tape. Uh, anybody's got a tape recorder, I wish you, if you can, get that tape on the royal seed for last Sunday morning. And Brother Fuller, he got out, of the, got out of the pulpit after I left and told the people to tell me I'd come take over his church. He and his wife would be janitor. Well, that was very sweet. Brother, <laughs> brother John shared it with his church. man. But I don't... Uh, uh, if I'd come to Phoenix, no, sir, I wouldn't start no church. No, sir, that's not in me. See, because if you start a church, you're, see, it's not my idea to start a church. It's to help what's already started, you see. If I come to Phoenix, I'm a missionary. I'm in and out around the world all the time. Uh, the pastor invited me. I'd be here one, one Sunday to help him, and next Sunday over to help the next guy, and next Sunday over to help the next guy, just everywhere I could to, to put in and make it good for everybody, see, call all the denominations and everything, to fellowship, and I may always wanted to come west, and I, maybe the last tie that bound me to the east was my mother that just went home to be with Jesus a few weeks ago, and my wife's mother about a year ago, so now we're both orphans without father or mother in this earth, they're gone on to be with our Lord, and we are... Uh, planning on maybe the Lord willing coming westward to live. Pray for us. Now, <clears throat> now in the before we approach the word, I want to read some of the word tonight and just speak for a little while. And by the way, I forgot that Billy give out any prayers. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, sir. That's that's good. Then we'll it's going to be a small place for a prayer meeting. But I've had it where. Someone said, some long, like a pastor one time, sometime when they have a small church, maybe see a hundred or two, they say, oh, Brother Bram, my church is just big enough. It's plenty big. The only thing you have to have is just a word from God. Yeah. That's all, no matter where it's at. I never let my meetings get big. Because when you do, or some obligation of radio, television or something, or some books or press or something, when you do, right then you're tying yourself down. I want to be where I don't have to have any money. I never took an offering in my life. And I, I don't have to have money, and the place can't get too little. If it's in a cottage prayer meeting, that's fine. I held a revival just recently where the church completely packed out, seated 20 people. That's right, 20 people. Now, if I'd had a great big, a great big something, maybe have to have several thousand dollars a day, I couldn't go to a place like that and do that, see? But I believe in being led by the Holy Spirit wherever He leads you, no matter. And I went overseas in Bombay, India. I preached 500,000 at one time. South Africa, two or 300,000. Well, I don't say, how you get the money to do that? Well, if God sends me, He always sends somebody with the money with it. See, so, <laughs> we must live by faith, you know. <laughs> so it's a great life, a faith life, isn't it? Just believe Him and... And I'll say some of the best meetings I've ever had has been churches way smaller than this one. And that's right. Where we just get together and have fellowship and the Holy Spirit comes down and there's where life is born. And that's right. That's right. That certainly is. Let us bow our heads now as before we approach His Word. Solemnly now, after we feel like that we're acquainted and kind of know each other, if there's a request here tonight that you would like for me to pray for you for some something or another, would you just raise up your head, uh, your hand rather, and say, Brother Branham, pray for me. God bless you. 
all around. The Heavenly Father sees. Now, precious Lord, the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought again the dead to life when he raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. We are so happy tonight to know that he raised up from the dead, and he's not dead no more, but alive forevermore. Two thousand years has come and gone, and yet we, we are with him tonight just as real as he walked in Galilee in his days. We just simply know that he is risen from the dead, making himself known to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. We're so thankful for that, Lord. And to see right now in this evil day that we live in when unbelievers and, and scientists and so forth are trying to cut away the very value of the Word, yet God lives in His Word. And we see Him manifest Himself, make Himself known, just as clearly and plain to us. And we're so thankful for that, Lord. And to know what if we were out tonight, out of the ark, and didn't know just where we were, wandering souls like the raven that was turned out of the ark, he was satisfied with living up on the dead carcasses that was floating on the water yet. But like the little dove had to find its way back to the ark and knock on the door or the window to Father Noah let her in. And we're so happy tonight to know that Father God has let us in this ark. And tonight we're safely, completely resting in the atonement that our Lord made for us, knowing this, that when the judgments come, that we'll float above the judgment. We'll be taken out of the world and will not have to stand the judgment. For our Lord promised us in St. John 5, 24, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has eternal life and shall not come into the judgment, but has passed from death unto life. Not a wandering soul when we die. We're in the presence of God. Not a wandering to it. Endless eternity lost to know we have to return back and be judged according to the deeds done in the body. But, Father, tonight we have settled that at the altar and our sins has gone on before us and been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. With the proof of it, God poured back the Holy Spirit upon us and we're sealed now into our eternal destination. We have needs, Lord, as we go through the world. This body is still physical, still born of sin. Someday it will be born of God. But today it's born of sin. And we are struggling as we walk through this dark, dismal world, looking above where only light can come from. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll remember each one of those people that raise their hands, from the least to the greatest, from the youngest to the oldest. Answer, Father. I pray that you'll grant them their request. And now as we turn the pages of the book, anyone that can got physical strength can turn back the pages, but no one can open it but he that was slain from the foundation of the world. We see the book taken out of the hand of him that sat up on the throne, the Lamb, was able to take it and to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So we pray, great Lamb of God, come among us tonight. As we read the Word, open it to our hearts to give us faith for the journey ahead. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, many people like to kind of read the text and so forth as we read it. And um, I wrote down some texts and so forth as usual. And tonight, I want us to turn over to Judges, the sixth chapter. And read for a few moments. And tomorrow night being the start of the convention, I, I try not to keep you just a little while tonight. And then we'll pray for the sick. And then adjourn and get ready for tomorrow night. Some are standing, and I know it's hard to stand. I went to get my car grease this afternoon. The boy was so slow at taking around three hours. And I, I was reaping, I guess, for what I've been sowing. For keeping people standing so long. So... <laughs> I started to complain, then I just shut up when I thought about it. Uh, no, uh, they've been, they, have, they never said nothing I won't either, so uh, just let it go. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, 
if the Lord be with us, then why then is all is befallen us? Where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? May the Lord add his blessings to these words. Now, we're all familiar with the scripture that I've just read. All reads the Bible. It was the time of the judges when there was... Uh, well, kind of a time between from the kings, God had judges. And there had been several judges, and every time that the, God would get the people straightened out, they'd all try to, to go to doing right after he'd sent judgment or something, and then the first thing you know, they'd fall away again. It's just natural for people to do that. It's just human for them to do it. Fall away. And as soon as they fall away, then God's judgment comes right in again. See? You cannot do wrong and get by. Because God is just. Yeah. Uh, he ju he, in order to be just, he must, he must keep His laws. And law without penalty is not law. Yeah. See? If there's a, a semaphore out here in the street, and uh, that says stop, that's a law for you to stop. And then if you pass on through it and the law has no penalty, then it isn't a law anymore. See, it should not even be hanging there. And if God begins to wave uh, something before you and tell you that you're doing wrong and you break that law of God warning you, then penalty is to be paid. You just must do it. You have to do it. You have to pay the penalty. And the wages of sin is death. So if a man transgresses God's law and continually is to do it, then don't blame God if something happens to you. See, if you're lost, you cannot say, well, it was God's fault. I've often said this, that a man has to literally fight his way to hell. He cannot go to hell easy. No, he has a hard time getting to hell. But he certainly fights his way right on into it. Remember, boys, the first little... Uh, uh, corn silk cigarettes you smoked? <laughs> you know what? Mama said, you know, um, you was afraid you, Mama's going to smell it on your breath so you got some coffee and eat it or something, you know, to, to keep it from being smelled. Mama said, let me smell your breath. See? Mama, there's nothing wrong with me. What's the first thing when you lied, that first lie? A red light begin to flash. Tell her the truth. Amen. Be honest, little boy. Mama taught you to do that. But you see, you fight your way right on through that barricade and red light. See? Remember the first time you trifled on your girlfriend? <laughs> you remember the first time you, you um, sassed your wife? The wife sassed the husband or something like that? Remember the first time you heard that hymn sang at church and something beat at your heart and you just shook yourself and turned away, I'll do it some other time? Them's all red lights. See? See? And you just walk right on over them. Warnings. Don't go the way you're going, little boy, little girl. Turn back to me. I'm your creator. But you walk right on through it. You can't expect nothing else. Don't lay it on to God. If you run through that stoplight out there, don't say the city's in blame. No, sir. You're the fault. That stoplight's there to protect you and to help you. And you must obey it. And then it isn't the city's fault. It's your fault. Because uh, you should have stopped when the warning come on. And when you feel that little buzzer down in your heart warning you, then you better stop right there and take inventory. Like I was been preaching along through the night to so the people drifting away from God, and you hear the word come right back to truly the word of God. There's a little buzzer rings. You better listen to it. Right, Don't walk across that, because you'll never get any farther until you come right back here where you left him. You'll where you leave Christ at. But failing to obey his word, right there he'll leave you, or you don't leave he don't leave you, you leave him. See, you always leave, leave him because he's got you in the path. He's trying to lead you. But see, when you leave him, then you have to come right back where you left him. You have to start again. 
I had a chaplain friend that was telling me of a case in the Second World War. Uh, there had been a, a captain that had been machine gun with, a, I guess, about a 50 caliber machine gun. He's cut across his chest, and he was, um, he was dying. And this chaplain was called to him. They told him to go out in the tent. They just picked him up in the hospital tent uh, that he was dying. He couldn't live. He was already cut through with bullets, and he couldn't live. He was bleeding inwardly. And so the chaplain said he got into the man where he was at, and he said, uh, uh, Captain, are, are you a Christian? He said, I used to be. And he said, you used to be. He said, why, you uh, should be now because you know you're dying. He said, yes, sir, I know it. He said, now, Captain, now think back with all. Now, you better think fast because you haven't got much time. But you think back all the way back to where you left Christ. And right where you left Christ, then you start right there and begin right there because you'll find him right where you left him. Now, you might have left him on, on uh, a doctrine in the Bible, something that told you, thou shalt not steal. He walked right, right over it. Thou shalt not lie. Walked right over it. Something or another that you should not have done, and yet you walk right over it. Now, you have to come right straight back and pick it up right there again. And so this captain was bleeding inwardly and the blood gushing into his lungs and he was catching his breath very fast and he knew he was going to, you better hurry up, captain, to think. He said, I just don't exactly remember. And after a while, a light come over his face. He said, I remember. I remember right where he left him. He said, all right, captain, start right there. And he said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And he dropped over. Where did he leave Christ? At the cradle, see, at the mother's feet, see, as a little boy. You had to go all the way back there to pick him up. That's where you'll pick him up, where you left him. Israel always getting out of the harmony of God. Nothing goes right till you come back to the harmony of God. And now they've just been delivered from a, an alien army. And instead of turning to the Lord... They turn right back away from him again. Isn't it strange? We'll get sick. The baby will be so sick that we just don't know what to do. Mother will wring her hands and her and dad will say, Oh, God, we'll serve you if you just heal this baby. And the baby gets well, then you forget about it. It's so easy to forget about it. Yes, sir. And uh, you'll see an accident that just almost takes your life and you'll say, Oh, if I would have died, Lord... Thank you for sparing me. I'm going to serve you then. Forget about it, see, until one's done caught you, see, and, that, and it's too late. See, you, you always, the people usually forget God. They don't always do it. Thank God for that. But mostly it's so easy to forget when everything's going good. Then, you know, he said, if you would neglect him and wouldn't serve him, then when your calamity come, he'd just laugh at you, you see. So you must remember we must keep God first always. Now, the people that got away from God and, had gone wrong, and so the Midianites and the uh, Philistines and different nations would come in and take them over. Now, we don't have Midianites and Philistines, but we have a lot worse. <laughs> the world gets right in and eats us up, just takes us right down. See, unbelief, and we get right away from the spirit part of the church and the spirit part of God, get out to farm and just... How do you do, Pastor? I want to take my letter out of this church over here because they, uh, uh, sister so and so, uh, she and I don't speak, so I'm going to bring it over to your house. <laughs> oh yes, see, um, and then see, we're just passing letters. But when you once write it on the Lamb's Book of Life, it's at home, man. See, that's right. Now, but we find out that these things happen, and uh, the time had come. In this case, for action, because the Midianites had come in like locusts across the country, and the Israelites had to dig caves in the mountains to hide, get back in there and hide a little food to live. Just getting back, way back, get away from them, because it, while they was coming in, like, just swarms of them. They'd bring their sheep, their cattle, their oxes, and eat up everything that the Israelites had planted, all their crops and things like that, and just drive them on back. So they was... They was going to get rid of them. And so eat up what they had. They wouldn't kill them. Let them come back the next year and make a crop. And by the time the crop got ripe, 
Here you come in again. Take them out. So we find out that there was a mighty man, a, a viler, who really didn't uh, claim to be, but he was thrashing his wheat down by the wine press, trying to get a, a little uh, together to take care of his family for that year. His name was Gideon, later become a judge in Israel. Now, we find out that before uh, God ever sends deliverance to his people, and I want you to catch this now for what to follow afterwards. Before God sends deliverance to his people, he always sends a prophet to notify them. Always sends his prophet. Because most of the time, people won't read and study his word. They just simply go join church and let it go at that. They don't sit down and read. The Holy Spirit it feeds on the word of God. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So if, when you get saved, the best thing to do is sit down with your Bible. Constantly read. That builds you. You see what God did. It's not like reading some novel. You're reading so you can hang your soul on every punctuation in it. That's right. Because it's the Word of God. You see, every time God says anything... You know how I punctuate it? With an amen. <laughs> That's right. Yes, so be it. That's right. What he said is right. And so we are to punctuate all of God's words with an amen. Yes, well, God says, thou shalt, shalt not and so forth. Say amen. Amen. Not saying, well, I believe it ought to be this way. Just say amen to what he says. That, that does it. Amen. So then God uh, had, had been good to them. And they, uh, and they had not deserved it. But then, before this great event taking place, we find out that a prophet was sent to them. And he spoke the word of the Lord for him. And then we notice immediately following that prophet's message, when he come to Israel and said, I'm the God that brought you up out of Egypt. I'm the one that gave you the land that you live in. And I've done all these things for you. See, the prophet always points back to the great supernatural God, a real prophet of God. That's a real preacher in a pulpit. A, a modern-day prophet is a, is a preacher. So a real true prophet points back to the word of the Lord, the promise of the Lord. Not the declaration the, uh, the church has made, but a, a declaration that God has made. See, Back to the word of the Lord. So God spoke to this prophet and they, the Midianites was taking all they had, and they were starving to death. And he said, don't you remember that I'm the God that brought you up out of Egypt? Don't you know that I performed all my miracles down in Egypt? Don't you know I opened up the Red Sea? I fed your fathers for 40 years in the wilderness. I broke off the enemies around them. Did not I take out the Amalekites and everything else from before you? I'm the God. Just turn back to me. Watch me. And remember, always or immediately after that prophet's message, God goes to work. After the prophet gives the word, then God goes to work on the word. First, it's got to come forth first. The word's got to be preached first. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word of God. The true prophet stands with the true word of God and doesn't compromise on it anyway, but tells the people that ye must be born again. Amen. The promise is unto you and to your children. For them it's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. If he's a true prophet. If he is, he'll say, well, now, we believe that who's we? Not God and his prophets and God and his angels and God and his word. They say that heavens and earth will pass away, said Jesus, but my word shall never fail. Amen. That's right. If any man adds to or takes away any of the words of the prophecy of this book, the same will be taken out of the book of life for him. So you see, the real true prophet stays with the word. And he began to show them what was taking place. And immediately God came on the scene. Immediately after the prophet's message. It's always been that. that God, I remember, God moves behind the prophet if the prophet's got the word of God. For my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that from which it was sent for, the purpose it was sent for. 
It'll have to come. There'll be a group that'll just like throwing water on a duck's back. But there'll be somebody there to get it because God is sending it. Amen. The word will not return void. It will accomplish what it's been purposed for. And now, this prophet stood and prophesied. The reason that God sends a prophet, the people get so far away from God by traditions of the elders and so forth, and they bring everything into the church that's whirly, and first thing you know, they compromise a little here and a little there and a little here and a little there. And the first thing you know, it's nothing but an organization. It's nothing but like a lodge. The people come there and have have all kinds of uh, soup suppers and dances and bunkos and everything else in the church, and it's no more than a, than a lodge. Amen. That's right. But then, you see, then that's way off from the Word. And many honest souls set out in them big margeries out there and thinking, uh, uh, this is it. But and before God sends His judgment, before He lets anything happen, before deliverance comes for the church, God is just and He sends a voice through the country speaking the word of the Lord God. Then as soon as God speaks His word, God is in His word to make it real and manifest His word, what He said. God is just. He just can't be nothing else but a just God. See? He stands right in behind His word. When that true word goes forth, Jesus said, If ye abide in me and my words in you, then ask what you will, and it will be done for you. Because it's God's word. It's got to come forth. Now, how God don't come down and speak it literally with His voice out of the heaven. He's wrote it on paper and expecting me and you to receive the Holy Spirit, to believe that Word. And when we speak that Word, if it's God's true Word, God stands behind it. Oh, yeah. right. God performs the miracles through the hands of His children. As I said here a few nights ago in some church, He's the vine and we are the branches. The vine doesn't bear fruit. It's the branches bears fruit. But it gets its energy from the vine. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, comes into the human body, takes a hold of His own Word, and moves it, shows visions, speaks in tongues, prophesies. He does all kinds of works to confirm His Word through human instrumentality. That's exactly what He did. Ye are my witnesses. You shall receive power after this. The Holy Ghost has come up on you. And then you are my witnesses. See, you have to get the thing right first. Wait in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power. Then you're witnesses to me just in Jerusalem only. No, Jerusalem, Judea, Samira, and to the uttermost parts of the world. You are my witnesses. After the, the, the vine and the branches connected together, or after the vine has put forth a branch, for if one is grafted in, it won't bear the right kind of fruit. But if the vine itself puts forth a branch, it'll be the kind of life that's in the branch will be in the vine bearing the fruit. Therefore, a true prophet of God says the Word of God is right from A to Z, every word of it. It's the truth. Now, the reason God does those men and sends those men is because if people won't study the Bible, they won't read the Bible, they won't study, they won't pray no more than... Write out a little prayer instead of a morning or something other. Or run over a few beads and say something another. And or hail Mary and God something. But that's not it. See? But God sends a true prophet. And the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. Always. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. And then if the word of the Lord is in the prophet. And then... The people can see God in action, God's Word in action in the prophet. There you are, because God confirms His Word. Look at Peter. He saw God at work. Look at Paul. saw God at work. Look at the prophets of old. They saw God at work. Exactly right. You take a man today, a preacher, that's preaching the full gospel, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They'll look at that man and see God at work. He'll have a life that will reflect anywhere, beyond a reproach, anything, see? It's God working. The people can see. You are written epistles. What kind of an epistle? An epistle of God. Amen. God bearing record that He sent you. So we find out that He uh, sends His prophets and they are the thing that lights up and shows the gospel to the people. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> I, I like that. Amen. Coming out of the seminary of heaven. Yes, sir. Yes. And God confirming that they come from there. 
Not so much knowing of genealogy, but a lot of neology coming out. That's right. Now, now notice. Now when we, Gideon, he would have been in a terrible condition. He's out there thrashing out his wheat. And the first thing you know, he looked over there and he had just heard that prophet's message. Now you'll get that in the 7th through the 10th verse. You can find where he met the, um, the, the prophet come and gave the, the message, telling him that to remember that God was God. And he's the same God that delivered him. And for them just to return to him. Now, wouldn't that be a message for today? <laughs> Certainly it would. God's still God. God is a God that was at Pentecost. God is a God that was in the burning bush. God is a God that opened up the Red Sea. Why do we care about hydrogen bombs or fallout shelters or what more man can make? God is our refuge and strength, very present help in the time of trouble. God of Abraham, Isaac, God of David. Certainly, he's still God. We just want to hear the word. That's what we are thankful, that we have heard the word and found it to be so. Yes, sir, he's a rock, a mighty tower, and he's a shelter in the time of storm. So he is our shelter. The righteous run into this tower and are safe. Yes, they are safe. That's right. He's on the home plate. He's called safe by the supreme judge. That's right, that he's safe. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. <laughs> He's the house of refuge. Now, Gideon, when he was out there thrashing his wheat, no doubt but that prophet's message is going through his heart. What that prophet said, I'm the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I'm the one to give you what you've got. Turn to me! And there he and his father out there thrashing his wheat. And an angel came to him, or he thought it was an angel. <laughs> It happened to turn out it wasn't an angel. It was God himself. Of course, you get quite capital L-O-R-D, you see. And when he spoke to Gideon, Gideon was a little surprised. He said, now, um, a mighty man of Viler, he didn't know he was. Maybe you don't know you are. You might be many of those mighty men of Viler tonight sitting here. You send to a, a little church, small group. Oh, my. There's only two there, him and his daddy. There only has to be two here, you and Christ. That's all it takes. To be a mighty man of violence. That's right. Now the first thing you know what happened. As soon as he spoke to Gideon, thou mighty man of valor, called him what he could do. And he said, Nay, Lord. No, Lord. I, I just, I, I can't believe that. Now he looked like probably a, an old bald-headed man sitting over there leaning up against the bush, you know. Sitting back against the bush. Maybe a sheepskin wrapped around him or something that was sticking his hand. He wasn't very much to look at. And he said, told him he'd come to commission him to go deliver Israel. The prophet had done give his message, so he said, I'm sending you to do this. Well, he said, nay, Lord, nay, no, no. I know the prophet might have said so and so and such and such of that, but, but remember, he said, God is with you. He said, if God is with us, then where's all of his miracles? There's the question. Well, now, what if he had said, oh, sure, our organization grew 10,000 this year. God is with us. No, each one of us, Got so prosperous, everything prospered, to each one of us got two Cadillacs apiece. That's what you can't be spiritual nowadays till you own three or four Cadillacs, Amen. you know, weekly. Exactly. Something yeah. like that. Hallelujah. Have the biggest thing there is in the country. But listen, no, he, he couldn't get that. He didn't say that, you see. He said, if the day we say, well, uh, how do you know God's with us? Because we're growing in numbers. We got more churches than we ever had. We got, well, you know, even the mayor of the city comes to our church. We know. We, we, we're the biggest church and the, we're the best there is. We know that God is with us because our people are prospering. They're wearing better clothes. They've they're, they got better homes. That's, that's all right. We're thankful for that, but that isn't a sign God's with you. Gideon knowed what he was talking about. He said, then, sir, if God is with us, where's all these mighty miracles? <laughs> that prophet told us that he was a God that brought us up out of Egypt. He smoked the land. He delivered them. He's a God of deliverance. And if he ever was God, he's still God. Amen. I say the same thing tonight. If he ever was God, he has to always remain God. If he ever was a, all the Almighty, he's still the Almighty. Certainly he is. The Bible said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, now, 
If that be God, if God is with us, where's all the miracles that's had? Where's all the signs that He done? Now, they might have had all kinds of signs and everything else, but there wasn't scriptural signs. Now, you, you got to have a scriptural sign. Amen. Jesus said, some of them said, well, well, if we got more members, if we got a bigger organization, if we got this, that, or other better dressed people, if our churches are growing, our organization, our denomination, uh, our, our ministers are better trained, isn't that a sign God's with us? No, sir. has nothing to do with it. Jesus didn't say they'll have better organizations as they grow and, and serve me. They'll have better churches as they grow and serve me. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils and speak with new tongues. There you are. That's scriptural sign. Yes, sir. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, then where is he? We have a right to say that. When Elisha had followed Elijah, and he said, I'm going to ask for one thing. That's a double portion of the Spirit that's up on him. And he threw back his robe. Walked down there, took off that rope, struck the Jordan and said, Where is the God of Elijah? She opened again. <laughs> if the church today, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we have a right to call on him and say, Where is the a promise that Jesus Christ made? I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Where is this promise? Let me see him work his works. The thing it has to take is first his word. <laughs> Don't go off on some tantrum and believe you can do it. You've got to come back to the word. Yes. Get conditions right. You've got, you must believe his word and act upon every word that he said to see the mighty works of God. Now remember, if you will just do that, see, believe his word, what he said, and then act upon it. You believe that? Now, uh, you just can't walk up and shake hands with the minister and take a salt shake and sprinkle a little bit of water on top of you and say, now, it's all over. Give them the right hand of fellowship. That ain't scriptural. No. That ain't right. You can't do that. You've got to follow the Word. You've got to do exactly what God said do. That's right. You can't say, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe I received the Holy Ghost when I believe. That's not what the Bible said. No, no sir. It isn't. You can believe is right unto eternal life, but then you have to have God to seal it with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Yes. <laughs> Not when you believe, but after you believe, you receive the Holy Ghost. After you believe, then you receive with the Holy Ghost the promise, says the Scripture. Yes. After you believe. Yes. That's right. But first you have to believe it and act upon it. You can't say, oh, there's many sympathizers say, oh, the Bible's right. Yes, Brother Branham, I believe that the Bible's right. But, you know, I, I don't know. There you are, but I... See, there you are. Just like an old goat. <laughs> but, you know, just, see, but it's all right. But, uh, you know, uh, our pastor don't believe that. It's all right, but uh, I don't believe it can be done. See, there, there you are again. See, you'll never see it done. You've got to act. You've got to do something. And when you will take God's promise and know that it is God's promise... And act upon it, you'll see the mighty miracles of God oh, return yeah. back to the church of the living God. Yeah. Right? You'll do it. Now, just think of this, friends. How could God lie? Are you going to believe a church? My first, my, my mother was dying the other day. She said, I told Dolores, that's my sister, nine boys and a girl. Dolores is the youngest. She said, Dolores, you're my youngest. You've loved me and helped come down and wash for me and taking care of me. Sense of God old said, Billy, you're my first. Said you fed me and seemed I didn't go hungry. And, and way back before your daddy died, 15, 25 years ago, and said, You've always cared for me and seen I had food and fuel and everything. He said, Billy, you've been a guide, spiritual guide to me that's led me to the Lord Jesus. And said, Now today I'm going and I'm happy. I want to go home so bad I don't know what to do. Now, and I stood there and I said, Mama, you know our background is Catholic. Therefore, when I was a little boy, and that boy spoke to me and said, Never smoke, drink, or anything doesn't work for you to do when you get older. I went down to the Catholic Church to find out. The priest said this. He said, You know, we are the church. We're the body of people. God's in his church. Well, then I thought, It isn't right so many of these different ones. I have to go see what the other one said. I went over to the Lutheran. They said, Oh, no, we are the church. I found out what a church was. was a body of people that was called out. Well, the Lutheran pointed one way. 
Catholic another, Baptist another, Methodist another, Presbyterian another. I couldn't put no faith in that. Which one is it? Which one is the church? Each one had something that sounded all right. You know why I said, Mother? I went right back to the Bible. Let every man's word be a lie and mine true. And I followed that Bible just what it said, and I got the same results that they did back there. So, I'm, and we're just resting up on that. It's the same result. God's got to keep His word. Right. True. We'll just believe it, obey it, accept it, and act upon it. Noah had a promise from God. It was God that spoke to Noah. But Noah, before he could see the mighty miracle of God, he had to go to work on the ark. He had to build the ark, holding on to a word, driving on the board, beating out the pitch, pouring it into the wood. He had to make the ark ready when it sounded crazy to everybody else. Well, what was he doing? Making it ready anyhow. He must have been on over 120 years of building the ark. Still, no sign of anything else, but he held on to the word. He was acting upon his commission. Amen. Amen. Mm. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every preacher. Act upon your commission. See what God does. Act on your commission. These signs shall follow them that believe. See? Act on your commission. You say, uh, I've received the word of God. You be prayed for. And the Holy Spirit promised you healing. Then I don't care how long it takes it to come, still act on your commission. Act like you're healed. Giving God praise. Just keep going on. That's right. You say, well, Brother Branham, I ain't never received the Holy Ghost yet. Accept the promise and keep acting. Now, just don't say you got it because you said it. That won't work. What if the disciples, after they said, Jesus told us to go up here now and to wait, he's going to send the promise upon us. In about nine days, uh, maybe Matthew or some of them might have come up or say it. Maybe it was Philip or some of them come up and said, Peter, don't you believe we've already received it? Don't you think we've already had it? Because, look, he commissioned us to come up here and wait, see? And we, we've been up here, this is nine days. You know, the other day I kind of had a feeling maybe he'd already give it to us. I believe we better accept it by faith and go on. <laughs> no, sir. They stayed there and waited till evidence come. Amen. They come there and stayed till they seen something that they could take a hold of and say, this is it. Why? They had a scriptural evidence of it. How did they know they was going to get it? Isaiah said in Isaiah 28, 19, Precept must be upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Hold fast that what's good for us. Hammering lips and other tongues will I speak to this people. And this is the rest that I said they should see. Joel, Joel 2.28 said, It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Upon my hands made the maid servant will I pour out of my spirit. They were waiting for something to happen that they could look at and see. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's see what He promised to do. Let's stay with it until it comes. Hallelujah. Yes. Noah built right on the ark, holding on to it. Preaching all the time. Standing right in the door of the ark, preaching to Him. Building away and preaching to Him. That's a real prophet of God today. Standing right in the ark, Christ Jesus. If ye be in me, my words in you, just keep building. <laughs> Pounding them up everywhere they are. Cheek it up every hole. Don't let the devil have a loop nowhere. No, no, sir. Stay right in the door and preach. Stand right in the door of the ark and preach. The ark, the door. Christ is the door to the ark. That's exactly right. I am the door to the sheepfold. And so stay right there and preach. Noah, before he saw the mighty miracles of God, to know that he was God, he seen the promise first, got the promise, held on to it, and acted upon the promise until he saw the mighty miracle of God. Amen. Yes. Then he's seen the mighty miracle of God. Moses, going on his road to Egypt with a stick in his hand. As I said the other night, a one-man invasion. Going down to take over with an old dry stick in his hand. He's, he's done it too. Sure did. Sure did. Why? He was acting. How do you know? Well, when you get down there, Pharaoh will hang you. He's been looking for you for 40 years. And whenever he finds you, you are certainly gone. You killed an Egyptian. You know what it is to even smite an Egyptian's death. And here you done kill one and hit him and run away. When you get back down there, it's death. But what was he doing? Acting. Hey, Amen. I don't know how many days it took him to get from Midia down there. But he went down. Well, he went down with that stick in his hand. Because he was acting upon what God promised him that he would do. Now, if God 
give you evidence of the Holy Ghost like he appeared to Moses in fire back there and let him know that he was God, then you ought, if you've seen God heal others, like Moses told him to stick down once and he knew he'd do it again, turn it to a serpent, he knew he was God and what he'd done once he can do again. Just like the prophet said to Gideon, the God of your fathers brought you up out of Egypt and brought all these miracles and things, he'll do it again. That's right. Well, the God that healed the sick is the God that healed you. The God that gave the Holy Ghost back there is the God that gave it to you. The God that healed Hattie Walter off there of a cancer laying dead in the line will heal you. Sure. He's God. That's all. If you expect to see His mighty miracles and His power, then first accept His Word and act upon it. Sure. Moses acted first. Then he saw God's mighty miracles. When God told him to walk towards the sea, he had to go towards the sea to see the mighty miracles. Whatever he did, he had to obey God to see God's mighty miracles. That's what we have to do. Yes. Elijah, when he went out there on top of the mountain, called him up there and said, let's see who's going to be God. Let the God that answers by fire be God. Because he knows that God is a consuming fire. Yes. Let the God that's got fire answer. They said, that's a good idea. We'll go up there. Well, he wasn't afraid that them heathens had anything. When he went to call him up on Baal and cutting themselves and acting up and jumping on the altar, he just walked back and forth to call a little louder. Maybe he's pursuing. <laughs> Maybe he's taking a nap, gone fishing or something. You know, just holler a little louder. He knowed where he was standing. <laughs> Come on. Yes, sir. A man that's ever got in contact with God and got a commission from God, then all the devils out of hell can take it out of him. Yeah. He knows where he's standing. Yeah. Certainly. Walk back and forth. Then when he did he laid his sacrifice down to the time of the evening offering, rolled up the twelve stones to show fellowship, all the twelve tribes of Israel. And he walked out there and said, Now, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, called him his prince name, see, of Israel, let it be known today that thou art God and I am your prophet, and I have done all this at your word. <laughs> there you are. What was it? Acting up on his word. What happened? The fire fell. Yes, sir. It consumed the sacrifice. He saw, and all the people saw the mighty work of God when he acted upon God's Word. Joshua. He marched around that wall just exactly like the chief captain told him to do it. He was out one afternoon walking. He was wondering how he was going to get the walls. He knew that he was, he was, uh, the enemy was defeated because he's inside the wall, but how is he going to get in there? So he took a little stroll one afternoon to meditate. That's a good thing. Get away from everybody and get to yourself a while. And he's seen a man standing with his sword drawn. Joshua he thought maybe that might have been one of the aliens. So he jerked his sword and run at him. He said, are you for us? Or are you of our enemy? He said, I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. <laughs> and he told him what to do. Now, it's kind of a hard thing to think you could blow a trumpet and the wall fall down. But he acted. See, God makes it so simple and silly, it goes plumb over the top of the head of the learned. Yes, yes. It takes those unlearned to... <laughs> <laughs> don't know very much to understand it, that's all. When you go try to figure it out, you can't figure it out. You've got to take God's word for it, the way He said to do it. Not the way we think to do it, but the way He said to do it. That's it. Do it just the way He said to do it. And Joshua marched just according to the commandments. And what happened? He took God at His word and acted up on it, and He saw the walls fall and the enemy die. The Hebrew children, they were acting upon the word of God. God told them they should not bow down to any image. And they should not do it. So the king said, you'll either bow down or I'll throw you in the fiery furnace. They said, now wait a minute. Our God is able to deliver us. We know what he'll do. But we're not going to bow down to your image anyhow. So they is acting up on the word of God when God performed a mighty miracle and sent the fourth man down among them like that and kept the fire off of them. What was he doing? acting upon the Word of God and saw God's mighty miracle. We could say another Daniel. Daniel was acting upon the Word of God. He bowed towards the temple, no matter who said they weren't ashamed of his religion, and he prayed three times a day, acting upon the Word of God. And he saw it. Now, Gideon, I'll hurry. Gideon, now he wasn't sure. He wasn't too positive. He was just an old man sitting leaning back against the tree, telling him what to do. He said, no, I don't know. I'm going to go to do it. He said, wait here just a minute. And he went and got an offering. He took the offering laid up on the altar. And this old fellow might have creeped up there with his stick like this and touched that altar. <laughs> the sacrifice was taken. Then Gideon was ready to act. Why? 
he had seen the living Word of God in action. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He saw God's living Word. He knew that God was living in that, that monument of a man there. Amen. That that was God. He called him Lord. Amen. Of course, he disappeared. He said, an angel of the Lord, which is just a manifestation, like Jesus being the Son of God, yet he was God. God was in him. But this is a manifestation of an angel of God, like it met Abraham. And yet Abraham called a man, L-O-R, capital L-O-R-D, Elohim. Anyone knows that reads the Greek Bible or the Hebrew knows that Elohim is the Almighty. See, he was there in that manifested in that little that little body of clay sitting there. The old fellow leaned up against the tree like it was tarred. But he took that stick and touched that sacrifice and it went up in a flame. See? Then Gideon knowed that that was the living Word of God. Gideon was ready to act. Amen. And after he got ready to act, he gave him so many thousands, he said, there's too many cowards in here. Just kept on, kept on, hunt them down because he got them that was... That God had called for. That's right. Sometimes when we see things going wrong, dropping off, maybe God's just getting an army ready. That's all. Yeah. Or some fighters ready. Yeah. You can't never tell. God, He was ready to act when He saw the living Word of God. He was ready to act upon it. When we see God living in His Word, then let's be ready to act upon it. Yeah. If we see a, a woman that's so low to the dogs that hardly look at her and see the Holy Ghost take that woman and straighten her up and make a lady out of her. Yeah. All right, come on. Man! We ought to be ready to act upon that living word. One night in a room, I hope I don't take too much of your time. I uh, uh, went into a room, uh, a big campaign, and they had a room twice this size. It was just full of straight jackets and insane and things. I walked into the room. There's one of the prettiest women i ever seen sitting there, a young lady. I said, how do you do? And she said, how do you, Brother Branham? And I said, well, I don't know where to start first. She said, perhaps with me. I said, with you? Well, she was a nice, clean-looking girl, big brown eyes and pretty and long hair hanging down her back. And, and she it was such a nice-looking woman. And I said, you're not a patient. She said, yes, I am. And I said, in this insane place? She said, yes, sir. I said, what happened? And she said, well, I'd like for you to hear my story. I said, go right ahead, sister. I'd like to hear it. She said, well, Brother Branham said, when I was a girl, said I was raised up with Christian parents that really believed God. And she said, I went to church. But said, all at once I got to go with a boy that smoked. And said, I happened to find out that he drank. And one night he wanted to get me to drink and I wouldn't do it. Said, I absolutely wouldn't do it. And he persuaded me to eat some candy. Or no, drink a Coke was one night. And he had some stuff in it. And said, uh, I wasn't a moral girl no more. And said, then I thought, what's the use? Said, I just stole my life away. And I become a regular street prostitute. And said, then I, I, I just did everything that was mean. I got to drinking. I got to be an alcoholic. And she said, then somebody told me to change my religion. I went away to the Good Shepherd's home in the Catholic Church. Changed my religion. They sent me up there for two or three years. Said, I'd done fine. I got back out. Said, when I got back out, I'd right back at it again. And she said, I went on like that for about a year. The law picked me up and sent me to the woman's penitentiary. And I served there two years. And said, then um, for delinquency. And, and said, then, uh, then after I got out of there, I come back and said, I... I'll tell you, Brother Bram, so that's just been about two or three months ago. said, I'm back doing the same thing that I always did. And I said, well, that's a shame. I said, a pretty woman like you, don't you think about uh, having a husband sometime and babies and like any a woman would do? It's got any lady about her at all. She said, oh, yes, Brother Bram. He said, who would have me? See? I said, what could I offer a man? I said, uh, nothing but a cruel life. Get drunk and carry on and things. I said, what could I do? And I said, well, God can straighten it out. She said, Mr. Branham, I prayed and turned over new pages and everything else. I said, I, I, I just don't know what's the matter with me. I kept just kept t- catching her spirit to see what was wrong, see. And just kept watching for a few minutes. And she said, I said, well, now I'll tell you, perhaps maybe you and I will pray. She said, all right, Brother Branham. She got down and we prayed. And I said, you pray now. And she prayed to God and she prayed and prayed. After a while, she got up and she looked at me. She said, well, Brother Branham. And I put my hand on her shoulder. And I said, God bless you, sister. And she raised up and said, I believe it's all over now. She said, I'm going to go out of here and try to live a different life. I said, sister, you'll go out and live the same life you live. I said, you're just turning a page. I said, it's not right yet. So I said, let's pray some more. And we got out and we kept praying. After a while, she struck something. My, it changed. Yes, sir. From like a little kid becking on a music till it went to making music. Yes, sir. Got some rhythm in it, you know. After a while, she got to really praying. And after a while, she began to scream, and the tears running down them painted cheeks, yeah. up like that. Directly when she raised up, them great big brown eyes looked at me. She said, Brother Branham, something's happened. I said, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
She's married and got three or four children now. What was it? She took God and stayed with her until actually something happened. And that's it. Something taken place. The living word become a living reality to her. And when God plants his promise in you and it becomes a living reality, then something is different. You just don't go and say, yes, I believe it. Uh, that's all right. The devil believes it like that. But it's confirmed to you in the life. The word becomes alive in you. Then you begin to see what it is. Yeah. John the Baptist. He was strange. John's father was a priest. We know that. That he was a priest. And instead of uh, going out now, when he, I guess it was kind of hard on him and his mother to, to find out the little John being promised the way he was. And he's going to be a mighty man of God. But they know they never lived to see because he's getting too old. And about nine years old, he say his father and mother died. Instead of John going back to, the, to study the priesthood, he knew, John knew he was to announce the Messiah. So instead of going down and studying in a school and get a Bachelor of Art and a Ph.D. and a LLD and a QUST and all the rest of it, you know, goes with it. So then, instead of going and getting all of that, he tucked out to the wilderness because the message must come from God. And God, now he knows there'd be all kinds of signs and all kinds of this because it always is that way, fraud is and everything else because it just does it to hide the real thing. There's a lot of people act like they got the Holy Ghost and go out and live any kind of a life. That's just an old scarecrow to try to scare you away from the real thing. Yeah, where's all the scarecrows at? Not on the sour apple tree, on the good apple tree. That's right. It's where the scarecrows is. And the devil puts all kinds of scarecrows around the real thing. You don't have to worry about the other thing. You ain't going to bother it anyhow. So then, they, when you got that real thing, that's where the scarecrows rise. That's where the bogus dollar is so close, you know, to see the very elect if possible, said Jesus, you see. That's where he watched right along that line there, see. So then we find out that John didn't want to be all confused. So he waited out there until he heard from God. And God told him what kind of a sign the Messiah would have. So John was acting up on the Word of God. They come down and said, John, are, are you the Messiah? He said, nope. He said, are you that prophet? He said, nope. Are you Jeremiah, Isaiah, Elijah, any of them? Nope. Said, I'm not him, but he's standing in your midst somewhere now. There's one among you now. How was he so sure? Because he knew it was time for the word of God to be fulfilled. Amen. 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 What we ought to do today, brother, it's time that the word of God's fulfilled. Amen. It's time that the signs follow the believer. Amen. It's time for the evening lights to go to shining. Amen. Time for Jesus Christ to manifest Himself the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is not a teaching. This is a saying. Remember, let me quote it again. Not a teaching, a saying to make a parable. God wrote three Bibles. One of them was in the sky. Man to look up to realize His Creator come from there. The Zodiac. What's the first thing in the Zodiac? Starts off with uh, the Virgin. What's the last figure in the zodiac? Leo the lion. First time Christ comes to the virgin. The next time he comes is to the lion of the tribe of Judah. The cross fish is the cancer agent. All as you read it through. Job studied it. And you read the book of Job, you'll understand. Now the devil, of course, takes and does things with that. Then we come back to the next one. They call the pyramid teaching. Don't never go after it. You've got a Bible to go after it. See? Now the next was the pyramid. But if you just get the real meaning behind it, now watch the pyramid for the church age. Did you know, look on, you got a dollar bill? Look on the back of it. There's a pyramid. On the other side, there's a seal of the United States. Why would the United States recognize under the pyramid the great seal? Look just above that top stone that topped off the pyramid, and you'll see it standing up with light shining around it. See? What's it up there for? That's the great seal. Why didn't that, they never did put a cap on the stone. I've been there at the pyramid. Why didn't they put a cap on it? Because it was rejected. That was a cornerstone where all the other stones just fit together. It was speaking of the church age. Look way down here, the Lutheran age. Way back in the majority. Back there just to confess Christ was my, just means to be a Christian. Justification. Along come Wesley. Sanctification. A little narrow. Sanctification. Then along come the Pentecost. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. What it is? It's shaping up. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, what's he doing? That's got to be honed out. So perfect. That church brought into such a place that the stone that's coming to fit on top of it. Amen. See what I mean? Hallelujah. That 
six is the church, and through it all is the church. Now, that's, that just, that's making a, a, a parable I'm talking about. Don't try to go into it. Then the next Bible, the real Bible, is this. This is our word. Just them signs and things they had back there. But notice how perfect that stone. It was rejected. They never did put it on. Why? And if you go there, them stones up in that pyramid that weighs thousands of tons, that is so closely fit together you can't put a razor blade and no mortar in it. So perfectly honed together. Then if that had to be like that to make each age fit together, then what's it going to be when the coming, don't you see the church shaping up? Luther justification. Wesley sanctification. Then come the Holy Ghost. And now church getting honed and fixed and without spot or wrinkle so him that had no spot or wrinkle can come down and connect it together for the resurrection for the church of the living God to take its flight into the glory. Yeah. Yes. Now we're living in that day. Now John was looking for that to come. He said, I'll know him. He's out there. I don't know where he is. He's standing out there. Maybe some bishop walked up and said, you know, I've been having a peculiar feeling going over me for a while. You know, maybe I'm the Messiah. He said, get away. That's John, that's not him. All right. Here come another one. So you know what? I've got the highest degree. I'm Caiaphas as a high priest. If there'd be anybody anointed for the Messiah, a man, it would be me. No, no. No, that's not it. But John said, he that told me in the wilderness to go baptize with water, said, upon whom I shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on. He's the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And remember, John saw it and nobody else saw it. It was a sign given to John to see it. And he saw it. And John was sure. And the reason he could announce, that is the Messiah. How can you be sure I'm following the Word of God? How can I be sure this man is a believer? I'm following the Word of God. God said these signs shall follow them that believe. Not because he's got a bachelor of art, because he's a Ph.D. or L.L.D. or bishop, priest, cardinal, or pope. See, that has nothing to do with it. That's man-made tradition. Yes, Hallelujah. Glory. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils who can even deny. See? Speak with new tongues. Take up serpents or drink deadly things. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Jesus said... He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. What kind of works did he do? <laughs> there you are. Did he organize a school? Send his disciples away for schooling? Did he teach Peter an education? He couldn't even write his own name. The Bible said him and John was not only unlearned, but they were ignorant. <laughs> ignorant and unlearned. But they had something to offer the man. <laughs> Silver and gold. There was rich no education, but what I have, I'll give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. That was their credentials. That's what they needed. They followed the Word of God. Then they saw the miracle of God when they followed the Word of God. Paul was sitting preaching one time. He'd seen a man had faith. I perceive you have faith to be healed. Stand up. That was it. That's right. It was, what was he? He wanted to see a miracle of God? Follow the Word of God. Quickly. Martha, oh my, poor little thing was heartbroken. She had left her big church. Her and Mary, they'd har harbored Jesus, made him a little place in Bethany. After he, he was, had no place to stay, they'd give him a home there with them, with her and Martha and Mary and Lazarus. And they thought that he surely was the Messiah and all this. And the brother got sick. See how God lets things happen. Just tear you all to pieces to test you. Every child that comes to God must be tried and tested. Think it not strange, beloved, when fiery trials come, it's all done to prove your faith. And so Jesus went away, and he said, uh, he's going away. And so then they sent for him, said, Lazarus got sick. So they sent said, the one you love is sick. Jesus never paid a bit more attention to it. Nothing went right on. Went to another city, and more runners come and said, Lazarus is sick. He's ready to die. Come on back. Jesus just ignored it as if nothing had happened. Went right on. See, he had already seen what the Father was going to do. Of course, he said in St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say to you, the Son can do nothing until he sees the Father do it. Yeah. And what the Father showeth the Son, that's what he, I work, he worketh and I worketh the other do. See, I only do what he shows me to do. Now, he didn't lie. He can't lie. He never performed one miracle until first God showed him by a vision what to do. Yeah. St. John 5, 19. If it isn't, that word's wrong. Then if it's wrong, what kind of a Bible are we reading? See, it's all inspired, all right. See, but he did it, and all the prophets, just as God showed them what to do. He walked by and healed that man laying there that had a 
prostate trouble or TB or something. Another had it 38 years. It was retired. It wasn't going to kill him. Left thousands laying there, lame, blind, halt and withered, and walked right away from him because that's what he said. He knew that man had been in that condition for that time. See, and he told him, "I can't do nothing until the Father shows me what to do." Now we find out, of course, that was a great flaw. They thought that against him, but he only acted to please God. And any man that's serving God will act to please God. He'll do what God tells him to do. Absolutely. Martha, she was aware that he was. After a while, now Martha, they had been saying that she was, she was dilatory and things about keeping her house clean. But when the showdown comes, she showed her color. Yes, sir. Mary was sitting weeping because her brother was dead. But Martha went out and met the living Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, he amen. was the living Word of God. Yes, he was. Amen. Right. God's Word made manifest. No wonder He could stand and discern the thoughts of the people. Now the Bible said, you said, oh, that's the Word? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Don't you know the Bible? Hebrews 4 said, The Word of God is sharper, more powerful than a two-edged sword, piercing to the sun of the mire of the bone, and a discerner of the thoughts yeah. of the heart. Amen. The Word of God when it's in you. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. The Word of God manifested in you. So Martha, when she came up and she fell down at his feet, and she said, Lord, Lord, that's what he was. If you'd have been here, my brother would not die. He said, But even now, whatever you ask God, God will do it. Oh, there you are. There you are. No matter what you've done, your attitude, you're following what God said do. Whether you said this or that, or whether you did come or didn't come, whatever you ask God, God will give it to you. Said, Thy brother shall rise again. Said, Hey, Lord, he'll rise in the last days. He's a good man. He'll, he'll rise in the gentle resurrection. He said, I am! Amen. The resurrection in life. Yes. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yes. Nobody could say that but him. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said, Yea, Lord. <laughs> I believe that you are the Son of God that was to come into the world. There you are. What is it? She's acting. She wants to see a miracle. So she's finding out what the Word says. I believe the Word. It's standing there in the form of the Son of God. His words is not His, not me that speaketh, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Whatever comes from them little lips of yours to speak, I believe it's a commission of God. You are the Messiah. What is Messiah? The anointed one. You are God's anointed one. God had an anointed one in a lesser measure one day. And his name was Elijah. And there's a, Elisha and a woman had a baby that died. And she went up to this servant of God. And she said, Thou man of God. She recognized him. And that anointed one of God come and walked through the floor. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Laid his body up on that little dead baby and he sneezed seven times and come to life. And if God did that by his anointed prophet, how much more will he do by Emmanuel? Yeah. I believe that you are the Son of God. If you ever get anything from God, you've got to believe God's servant, God's word. He, he was the word. I believe. Just tell me what to do. Or have you laid him? Down he went to the grave, weeping like a man. When he got down there, what do you say now do when he get here? Say he got something to do too, you know. He said, take ye away the stone if you want to see a miracle. <laughs> you sick people tonight. If you want to see a miracle, take away the stone. Amen. Take away that stone, that sin it lays at the door. What is it? Say, Brother Bam, I don't do nothing. But if you don't believe it, it can't happen. Take away that stone of unbelief and watch what happens. Just take away the stone. And when she obeyed the word of the Lord, she saw a miracle. Sure. The woman at the well, she was kind of under, she didn't know what to say. She seen this Jew sitting there. Now, it's funny that that Jew would talk to me. I'm a woman of Samaria. Wonder what his cause is. She said, uh, well, uh, you say you Jews say worship at Jerusalem. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. He said, woman, I'm telling you now, that neither in Jerusalem or either in this mountain, but God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. She knew that sounded right. God's God of one. He's God of all, all his creation. Yes, sir. So she looked, you know, race and tribe and color had nothing to do. God made them all. God of one man made all nations out of Adam. Now we find out. 
that uh, the color of the skin and uh, their tradition or their yeah. church membership had nothing to do with it. It's an honest heart he's looking for. Yeah. So he looked down there, and she's seen again. She said, and then first thing you know, he contacted her and found out where her trouble was. She'd been living with the wrong man. And he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. He said, that's right. You've had five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. She turned. What? She met the living word. She said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Now, we don't know about any prophet in this day rising. But we know that when the Messiah cometh, that's going to be the sign that he'll show us. He'll tell us these things. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Oh, my. What did she see? A whole city turned to God. Why? She followed the word of the Lord. I am he that speaketh. And she ran into the city and said, let's read the scriptures. Don't the Bible say that will be the sign of Messiah? Come see a man out here that told me the very things that I'm doing. How do you know? Just like John did. How do you know he's standing among you? It's the age for it. How do you know it is? That's the very Messiah because it's time for Messiah to appear. Don't you see what I mean? It's time for this church to be on its feet. It's time for the Pentecostal movement to wake up. Pull yourself away from your traditions that you're shaking yourself into. Shake yourself and ask for the old way. Knock the ecclesiastical dust off of yourself. Rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and take God at His word and march forward. If God be with us, where is His miracle? Where are they at? Where do we see those signs of God's in all these churches and these great big ecclesiastical towers and so forth and all these PhDs and things? Show me His miracle. Yes, Where is God? Glory. Where is God? Where is His miracle? Where God appears, He's supernatural. His supernatural sign follows a supernatural God. God is. Where's all of His miracles at? She's seen the miracle of God, the sign of the Messiah. She caused the whole city. The Bible said that all the man, Jesus didn't do it anymore. They believed the testimony of the woman. She had the privilege then of leading all the whole city to Christ because she followed his word and, his, and seen that he would, could perform a miracle. Knew that it was the Pentecostal people, the Pentecostal 120, that went after they had believed him, they went and obeyed him, waited in the upper room until they was endued with power from on high. Cowards pulled the window blinds down, barred the windows, a little old upper room, went outside the temple, went up along the side and went in the door, up there for ten days and nights just waiting. Brother, when the word was made manifest, they got out of the windows and doors and out into the street, something had happened. Why? They had seen a miracle. They seen light. Like tongues of fire setting up on each one of them. They felt the power of the Holy Ghost shake. They both seen and felt. They know something happened. They run out to try to testify and couldn't even speak their own language. Something happened. Three is the way. They felt it. They saw it. And they watched it manifest itself. Felt it. Saw it. And heard it. Three is a witness. And there he was. You had to see it. The same now. All of his promises, if you want to see him made, made manifest, the only thing you have to do is just keep his word. Obey his word and he'll do it. Oh, my. All right. If you go out here on any day, if the time is right in the day, do you believe it's time for the Messiah to appear? Do you believe it's time for the church to show his presence? To show the presence of Christ. And just sit it. you want to go to church and join the church and say, we Presbyterians, we Baptists, we Methodists, we Pentecostals, we so-and-so, and we, uh, we, we're, we're the ones, we, we got this and we got that. That day is dead as midnight. That's right. See, just doing that. That's right. But it's time for the evening lights to be shining. As the song says, it shall be light in the evening time. It's time for those evening lights to shine. This is the time. Now, what's to keep them from shining? You go out any day, any day you want to, and just move back all the clouds, and the sun is shining anyhow. Yes, amen. <laughs> the sun's shining all the time. Yes. Just move the clouds. 
The same God that healed, the same God that filled with the Holy Ghost, the same God made every promise. Is the S O N of God is shining at all times. Just move the clouds of doubt away. He's the same yesterday and forever. But we got a lot of ecclesiastical clouds that shaded him off from us. A lot of denomination and nonsense has kept Christ from us. Just stand back by prayer. Every one of those old clouds and see if Christ doesn't appear the same as he ever was. If he doesn't appear in the same light, the same power, the same signs, the same wonder, see if he isn't still the same Messiah. Amen. Knock back all the clouds, weigh them back from one side. See if it isn't. Sure. If you, but first thing you got to do is believe and act. Now, that's the right. The mighty man of Viler was correct. If God be with us, then let us see his miracles. Where's all the miracles? Where is the sign that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever? Then where is the sign that he's the same? What did he promise? St. John 14, 12, The works that I do shall you do also. Where is it? He promised it as it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. When God came down, we never know where that body went. There's three of them, three angels. One of them was God himself. He come down in a human form, stood there and eat with Abraham. That's right, amen. That's right. He stood there and talked with Abraham about the, the things. He said, I'm not going to keep this from Abraham. I'm going down to Sodom. I heard it's awful wicked. I'm going down to find out. Abraham fed him milk, cornbread, whole cakes, you know, cornbread, and some veal chops. And he eat it. Amen. Right? You say, God eat that Jesus eat after his resurrection. Yes, amen. Here we go. You stood there and eat it. Some of them said, that wasn't God. Well, then Abraham was wrong. He called him Elohim. Yes, he did. He did. It was God. Yes, it was. God. Was what was he doing? He's showing something. Amen. Just like he cast out the bondswoman and her child, that the free woman and her child. That's the reason Abraham didn't want to marry Hagar. But he, he said, uh, marry her. Listen to what Sarah tells you because it had to be fulfilled. The prophet had to lay on his side for so many hundred days and the other side. What? For a sign. And he was showing the sign there God manifested in the flesh that Jesus turned around his son when he came on earth and said, As it was in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, giving him marriage, that'll be what will be at the end of the time. And as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. As I said last night, there's always three elements. Unbelievers, make believers, and believers. And there was the Sodomites, the unbeliever, there was Lot, the make-believer, and there was Abraham, the elected church, called out. Amen. See? Here we sit today. Here we are today. There's the unbeliever, the sodomites. Look at them out there. Women walking through the streets, wearing short, smoking cigarettes, bobbing their hair, calling themselves Christians. Yeah. Oh, my, doing all these kinds. Yeah, calling themselves Christians. Oh, yes, sir. Parties, dancing, man, perverted. I get letters after their homosexual on the increase. You see, the, yeah. I get the government statistics of it. Increased 30% last year. Yeah. Perversion. Natural course of human life. Perverted. Yeah. Sodom. Yeah. Look at the coal farm. We'll just ride into it. Just the same. Wallowing with the hogs. Yes. Watch that messenger that went down there. Two of them. A modern Billy Graham, as it was. Preaching and blinding them with the Word. Amen. Then there was a church that didn't do that. It was called out. That elect church. Glory. 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 The elected church, Abraham and his group, what appeared to them? The messenger that appeared to Abraham called him what his name was that God had given him just a few days before from Abraham to Abraham, Amen. from Sarah to Sarah, and said, where is your wife, Sarah? Called her name. Said, she's in the tent behind you. So I'm going to visit you, Abraham, according to the promise I made you, the time of life of Sarah. And Sarah laughed to herself. Amen. Kind of like I just said, why did Sarah laugh? Amen. What was it? It was God. Amen. Jesus so much has said before the time comes that that elected church, that Pentecostal group. Now, Pentecost is not an organization. Now, you brothers has got the Pentecostal assemblies, the Pentecostal a oneness, the Pentecostal Church of God, the Pentecostal Foursquare, and all that, you're fooling yourself. That's an organization which is all right. I have nothing against it. But you're not the group. Pentecost is an experience. Amen. That Methodist, Amen. Baptist, Amen. Presbyterian, Amen. that 
that the assemblies oh, yeah. and the four square and the church of God and the, well, the Jesus name and all the rest of them can have it if they'll just obey the word of God and follow after him. They'll see the miracle of God will change their life and the things will fall away and they'll become... The Methodists can have it. The Catholic can have it. The Presbyterian can have it. How many Catholics it was once Catholic? Raise up your hand. Can't the Catholic have it? How many Baptists with me? Presbyterians. <laughs> see? No, no. We can't organize it. It goes everywhere and gets whosoever will let him come and drink. And that's right. Oh, yes, sir. See? Now, that elected church, they all set together, see? They all, but that elected church will see that sign. Amen. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Yes, that's right. It's evening time. Where is God? If God is with us, where is His miracles? Now, Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe it? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, such a wonderful group of people to speak to. And I may never get this privilege again, may never be here again. Oh, God, we may never see morning come. Science is trying to tell us that there's five stars going to fall together. That's why they say all the world, the nations are froze up on this side of the earth, a continent. Here's Phoenix with pouring rains and weathers that they've never seen. They claim that five stars are moving together out down there. Some says the world will burst like a watermelon. We don't believe that, Lord. There's to be a millennium yet. But some says there will be earthquakes that will shake the houses all over. Some of them says that great tidal waves will blow 300 feet in the air. In the next few days, the world's a trembling. There will be fearful signs, you said in the last days, sights, signs in the heaven and in the earth. Fire and vapor and pillars of smoke, earthquakes in divers places, perplexity of time, distress between nations, man's heart failing for fear. But that time, the Lord, you said, lift up your head. Your redemption's drawing out. Now, Father, we're going to lift up our head tonight above our organization. I'm going to lift up my head above the group that I belong to, the Christian businessman. I want every man, every Methodist to lift his head above it. Every Baptist, every assembly, every four square, oneness, or Jesus' name, or whatever they are, Lord, lift their head above it. Look up under where Jesus said. Look what he said. If I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all man unto me. Oh, God, let us see him sitting out on the right hand of the majesty of God, sitting there on the throne of God tonight ever living a high priest to make intercessions upon our confession. A high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmity. Lord, I've just got through preaching. When a prophet or preacher goes forth and preaches a word, and if it doesn't come to pass, then don't hear that prophet. That's what your word says. But if it does come to pass, then hear that prophet, for I'm with him. Lord, I've said to the people tonight that you are the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. Your time is at hand, and the evening lights are shining, and all these things that I have announced. Now, Father, give a group out here that's got faith now to believe it. Let the faith that was in Christ, the mind that was in Christ, come in us. And if we have the mind of Christ, if I can have his mind in me tonight, there's a little woman sitting in here maybe somewhere that's got a blood issue that could touch the high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Then if his mind be in us, he'll act the same way because he is the high priest. And he's the Word of God. He is the Word of God. And if the Word of God be dwelling in us, then it's sharper than a two-edged sword to preach sermons that will cut to the core, that will lay not the axe to the root of the tree, and it's also a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Now, Father, let thy word be known. We believe it. This little church believes it, Lord. These people believe it. This pastor believes it. These other pastors believe it. We're together tonight in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst of them. And the works that I do shall they do also. A little while, and the world will see me no more. Yet ye shall see me, the believer, for I'll be with you all the way to the end of the world. I believe you, Lord. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, Father, for this little group, I'm going to call a prayer line to pray for the people. I pray that you'll heal every person that's in this building tonight. Grant it, Lord. May these prophets sitting here on the platform, prophets out there in the meeting, Godly man, call man, separated man from the things of the world, separated women, separated young girls, 
separated young boys from all this rock and roll and nonsense of the world. Little ladies and gentlemen that's really spirit-filled that belong to these full gospel churches that lets their light shine. Women that wouldn't smoke a cigarette or do anything wrong for nothing. True and loyal to Christ and to their husband. Husbands that's true to Christ and their wife and their family. Lord God, Abraham stood true to you up on your promise. Abraham's seed, which we are by faith in Christ, we stand true to the promise. And you made yourself known to Abraham just before the promised son appeared. The promised son came after that sign. Now, Father, we're looking for the promised son. Let the sign appear. Grant it, Lord. Just then the fire fell, and we're looking for it at any time. The last sign. May it be so, Lord, as we all commit ourselves. I take this little church under the control of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we present ourselves to you. That we might see you here, Lord. A visible, living evidence that Jesus Christ still lives. Grant it, Lord. Bless this little church and its lovely little pastor. I pray, God, your presence will ever remain here. And the power of God will sweep the city from this place. Grant it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm sorry to keep you so long. That's awfully hard and cutting and so forth. And anyone knows and hears me preach it, I'm not a preacher. I, I am uh, I'm not got the education to be a preacher or call myself one. But brother, sister, I do love the Lord Jesus. He's given me another way to let you know that I'm telling you the truth. What little I have, I know about him. I don't know very much about him, but what I know, it's real. It's just so real. I wish I knew what some people did know about him. Maybe it'd, yeah, I can, it'd be more real to me if I could know him in another way. But much as I know of him, I know he keeps every word that I know he's promised. I know it's the truth. God bless you. Now let's just sing one little chorus of a song. I, I love him. How many knows that old song? Just real sweet and out of worship in the Spirit now. I love him. I love him. Because he first loved me. And Now, while the sister chords that sweetly, mm, just get your mind on him now. As they begin to think on him, Theopas and his friend was walking one day talking about him, and he stepped right out. Walked with them all day. They didn't know him. But when he got him shut in in a little building like this, he did something like he did before he was crucified. No other man could do it like that. And they knew it was him. But he vanished out of their sight, going out the door just in a minute. See? They knew the Lord had risen. May he come tonight and do something like he did before his death. Then we'll know in this age that he has risen from the dead. For if he is the same Jesus, he'll act in the same way he did. Now, while we're doing this, humming it, I want you to shake hold of somebody's hand, sit next to you and say, sister, brother, I'm going to be praying for you that you'll get healed tonight, get all the blessings of God that you desire. Just say that as you, to each other as we do. Because
together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. He is ever present. Isn't he wonderful? Then I Isn't he wonderful to heal that lady? Wonderful, isn't he? Yes, is. Praise be to God. Yeah. So wonderful. All right. One. Give our prayer course one to fifty. One to fifty. Let's just get a few of them. Now, what is it? What do we call? What's well, a different group tonight? Is it? Is the same letter? B and C. Let's call from C. One to. Let's see how many we can get. Let's call one to ten. One, B, or C, one, one, prayer card, one, who has it? Raise up your hand. Has the lady there got it? Do you have prayer card five? All right. Five, who's got one? Maybe I was wrong. One, all right. one two, three, four, five. Stand them right here. Just would you little children just kind of go back by the door there? Come right up here, sweethearts, if you will. If you want to come up here on the platform, I guess that'd be all right. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let line up from one to fifteen. Let's start with them because I doubt we're gonna get that many in there or not. Just what you can get. Huh? We're gonna get <clears throat> one to fifteen. My brother, if I did a privilege. All right. How many in the building now that does not have a prayer card? And yet you want the Lord Jesus to make you well. Raise up your hands. Everywhere in here, it's not going to be in the prayer line. Raise up your hands. It's, sick. it's just all over the building. You could. Now look, while they're uh, getting the, the people's getting their places, I want you to do this. I want you to say like this. Now, now remember, if, if, that, if that isn't the Word of God, then I don't know it. That's, that's a promise. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, now, He's got to act the same as He did. He's got to be the way and ever principle, only a corporal body. Because His corporal body is still a sacrifice on the throne of God. And He sits there, and His, his bloody garments is uh, the propitiation for our sins. He Himself is acting as a high priest to make intercessions upon what we confess that He has done. See? That's not by feeling. It's by faith. Okay? You can just beat and cry and everything else. It'll never work. It ain't. I, I, Jesus never did say, Did you feel it? 
He said, did you believe it? See? Did you believe it? You've got to believe it because, see, he, you can't make the word contradict itself. It's got to run perfect. Just like them blocks and things, see. It's got to run perfect. One dovetailing with the other and you lap them over, see. You can't do it. So Christ is perfect. So his word's perfect. Now, he is a high priest to make intercession upon our confession. We confess of anything that he did for us. He's there before the Father to make it right. Look, if Jonah, in the belly of the whale, with his hands and feet tied, with all the seaweeds around his neck, the vomit of the whale, maybe 40 fathoms deep in the water, on a stormy sea, running from God, could turn over in that whale's belly and look at all of that symptoms he had around him and note his conditions and still said they were lying vanity. Once more will I look towards your holy temple. And God kept him alive for three days and nights in that whale's belly. Do you believe that to be the truth? The Bible first says it, and Jesus said it was so. Now watch. Jonah. Jesus said over there in the Scriptures that a wicked and an adulterous generation will seek after a sign. Is that right? And they would see a sign, the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Then Jonah came out of the belly of the whale. Is that right? Now, is this a wicked and an adulterous generation, both physically and spiritual? Spiritual adultery? Physical adultery, wicked, adulterous generation will receive a sign. What was it? What sign was it then? As Jonah was in the belly of the whale, rose up, so much the Son of Man being in the belly of the earth, heart of the earth, and raised up. Then the sign that this wicked and adulterous generation would get would be the sign of the resurrection. Is that right? Sign of the resurrection. Now, what would it be then? It would be Christ raised from the dead and after 2,000 years yet alive working with His people. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that right? Now, how many of these sick people, how many people in the prayer line knows that I don't know nothing about you? Raise up your hands, you that's in the prayer line. Knows that I don't know you or know anything about you. How many in the audience knows that I don't know nothing about you or anything about you? I don't know any of you. I, not this prayer line, I'll say first, out there. Now, there's some people there that I do know. I know this, these, this about from that, that, from that little red-headed girl there along this way. I know that row there. Brother and sister down. Them two behind them, I know them. Two behind them, I know them. Right here, and this row right here. One, two, three, four back. I know them. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if that isn't brother and sister outlaw sitting right back here, from the Jesus Name Church and Brother and Sister Sothman, the deacon from my church in Jeffersonville. I'm our trustee, rather, on the board. Now, I I don't know. I believe right here in this corner, sitting right here, this young man and woman, I believe that's Brother and Norman's brother-in-law. I forget what his name is. That's right. Outside of that, I don't know, uh, Brother Williams and Brother Rose, and just met this brother here, and that's outside of that, I, I don't know anyone. I believe your sister under, don't you? Downing, Downing, that's right, from Memphis. All right? I, now, outside of that, my son, I don't even see him now, so I ever worry that. That's all that I know of. Now, which is the first lady in line? You right there? Or right here? You're the first lady. All right, would you just stand up here a moment? Now, here stands a woman that i never seen in my life. Now, if I was to say, here sits a man sitting here in a wheelchair. He's holding his arm. It looks like it's been paralyzed or something. See, I don't know what it is. It's crippled. If I'd say, that man's crippled, anybody can see that. <laughs> For years, a woman looks healthy and strong. Now, where's her trouble? That's where your miracle comes, you see. That's it, see. Now, if um, if 
Well, uh, if I'd see some person was all drawed in, their chest all sunk in, coughing, now, I could say that was TB. That'd be a guess. Okay? That person might say, oh, no, I have not TB. See? And it might be proven that they haven't TB. See? You can't tell. But when God says anything, it's right. Yeah. It's always right. It's always right. Now, now, this woman might just be putting on. She might just be saying something. She might not even be sick. Might there be nothing the matter with her? Well, I, I don't know that. I can't say. If she's just standing there, don't worry. It'll be called out in a few minutes. See? She'll know. She'll find out. How many have ever been in a meeting and seen that done? Oh, mercy. I've seen over two or three hundred die over it. <laughs> I know a man tonight sitting paralyzed, been that way for several years. When I was up there at Zion City, when that man sat back there trying to hypnotize me before those people, I kept trying to run a prayer line and he kept sitting there. He'd go to the army camps, you know, and he'd, he'd make the boys hypnotize and make them bark like dogs, you know, and act like that. I kept feeling that funny spirit, and they'd, they'd had him come in there, a familiar church. The night before there, there'd been a, a man come which belonged to a certain denomination. He'd come up there, and he wrote on his prayer card, I have TB, so-and-so, and all like that. He thought it was a, a, a telepathy. So they handed the prayer card to the usher as he come up on the platform. And the man come up there, and I said, There's nothing wrong with you. He said, oh, yes, there is. Look on my prayer card. I said, I don't care what the prayer card says. There's nothing wrong with you. He said, well, look, I've got TB and so and so like that. Look on that prayer card. I said, I don't look on that prayer card. I look towards heaven. See? And, uh, he said, well, that's what's the matter me. I said, well, maybe you might have had it down there. If you have, you haven't got it now because <laughs> you, it just isn't there. And he said, I said, you might have got healed down there. He said, uh-huh. That's what you think you got healed down there. I thought, what's the matter with this man? I turned and looked again. There was a vision broke before him. I said, you deceiver. You belong to a certain church. Last night, you sat with that man right up there with a red suit, with a red tie and black suit. And you, that's his wife sitting right over on this corner and your wife. And you sat by a table that had a green cloth around it and you made up and she's coming here to do that to prove that this was a mental telepathy. I said, the things that you got on your card is up on you. He died about six weeks after that. But you never do that. <laughs> This man, a few weeks after that, a few nights after that, was sitting there trying to hypnotize me like that. And I kept feeling that odd spirit. I said, please, everybody, keep your head down. Be reverent. You've heard me say that many times. I'm watching the spirits, you see. And then he kept doing that and doing that. And directly turned around like that. I said, why is the devil putting your heart to me? I said, you walked in, but they'll pack you out. And they did. That's <laughs> exactly right. He's still paralyzed. That's right. He just got up. He was stiff. He couldn't hardly move. And he wrote letter after letter, calling, come on. I can't do a thing about it. That's his own sin. He has to make that right with God. The only thing, I wouldn't put my hand on it for nothing. <laughs> How about that man in Phoenix down here when I first showed that time? Remember over here in the place that um, it's, wouldn't put his head down? And they pulled me over him a dozen times in California, sitting with that beard all over, official here in the city. Beard all over his face like that. Sitting there going, uh, uh, like that, no mind at all. An evil spirit was cast out of one and went into him. Right, right here in Phoenix, my first trip. Right, so you just have to be careful now. We're not playing church. It's just like it was the days of Gideon. Time of playing church is over. Amen. We got to get ready to meet God. Yes, sir. Go around, and sign your name on a ticket, and join a church. That's all out. Remember, these things will go from one to another. It certainly will. The woman I know not. I've never seen her in my life, as far as I know. She, she's sick. I know nothing about it. Is she wanting prayer for somebody else? I know nothing about it. It's just up, it's up to God to say so. But if He will say so, let her be the judge whether it's right or not. Would you believe then that the coming of Christ is near and that same Holy Spirit, that same God that was down there at Sodom is the same God who's peering back here in men and women tonight? You believe that? Thank you, Judge. Believe it. Believe it. <laughs> Now, I want her to look the way she's looking. So you won't see that thing. I was reading anybody. People say I read the people's mind. Oh, for anybody that even knows the first thing of that knows that that's purely why telepathy is you guess a number, let me guess at it too. <laughs> There's no such a thing as that mind. So I'd not go telepathy. They called Jesus to be Elzebub because he did it. They said he was a fortune teller, a devil. He said, I forgive you for it, but someday the Holy Ghost is coming to do the same thing. One word against it will never be forgiven. 
Mm-hmm. This world or the world to come. So you see where it puts us at. You understand that, don't you, sister? All of us do. Now, I don't say that he will do it. I trust that he will. Because I don't know you and you don't know me. And here we stand here tonight. And if I had power, to, if you're sick and I had power to heal you, I'd do it. If I told you, I'd lie. The only thing that I can do is tell you that the Word says that by His stripes you were healed. That's right. You were healed. I can tell you now, the woman's not a sinner. She's a Christian. And she's got a fine vibration in her spirit. She's, she's a Christian. And she's suffering with arthritis. That's right, isn't it? Yes, sir. And that operation was a gallbladder operation. And then when you had that, you was a little afraid that uh, that operation had something to do with this, and you've been all troubled up ever since. You've got a lot of complications now. That is right. Yes. Now, do you believe that God's going to heal you and make you well? Yes, I do. Just walk it off the platform and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. How do you do, ladies? We don't know each other. God knows us both. But if God will tell me what's your trouble, will you believe me to be his servant? It's not for you. It's for somebody else. Your niece. Go believe. <laughs> you believe with all your heart? Just have faith. Don't doubt. Come back. Got started in the audience. Now your faiths begin to lift up. You see, you can feel it. You just... It's something that throws a pull at you, see. Everything you look out there and just look like the room begins to turn like an amber light. You know, just looking around. Now you say, Brother Brand, that would affect you like that. If one little woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment and it made the Son of God get weak, what would it do to me, a sinner, saved by His grace? Just have faith. We are strangers to each other. I do not know you. But if the Lord Jesus will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you believe me to be his servant? And you believe that what I've said is a confirmation of what God has promised. You do that. All right? Your trouble's in your side. That's right. You've had an operation. Cancer. You're all run down. That is right. You wonder what's wrong but you're going to be well now. Oh, now, if he can tell you what has been, was that true? Yes. Well, if he can tell you what has been is true, then what he says in the future is true. <laughs> How do you do? How do you do? We're strangers to each other. I don't know you. Is it for the boy? All right. Just a moment. Just be real reverent and believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he'll bring the rest of it to pass if you can just believe him. You wipe your eyes then, sister, praying. But the intestinal trouble has left you. Just believe now with all your heart. (laughs) Have faith. feel different already, don't you? That's right. Raise up your hand so the people can see. I want to ask you, who did the woman touch? She never touched me. She's too far away, see. But she touched the high priest. Touched the high priest. You're concerned about the boy. kind of kidney bladder. Has your husband prayed for him then? <laughs> he should have been a minister. <laughs> He'll be all right, don't worry. <laughs> Isn't Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? that light hang over the man there it's praying them headaches leave you you'll be alright now just don't doubt have faith it'll all leave just praying for him to do that wasn't it that's right 
Then, Lord Jesus, have Brother Bram call me. That's right. Raise up your hand. It's all gone. That calls the man behind you, believe. That trouble in your feet will leave too, brother. <laughs> if you can. Oh, yeah. He can feel asthma too, can he? Make it well. All right. Just go believing with all your heart. <laughs> Have, don't doubt. Just believe with all your heart. All right. You believe out there now? Don't doubt. There's an odd spirit moving in here. I trust that the Lord Jesus will make it right. Yeah. All right. All right, go ahead, bleeding up, sister. All right, little boy. For him. Yeah. I say. Yeah. Go right ahead. It'll leave him. And he'll get all right. All right. You believe, sister? The female couple will all be all right. Okay, leave with all your yeah. have faith now. Come, sister. You believe God heals heart trouble? Yeah. He can heal yours too, can't he? Just go over there. How do you do, oh, sir? You want to go eat your supper? Go ahead and eat. God bless you. All's gone. Nervous stomach troubles gone. It's all been gone. Just have faith. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. You're a very big, stout-looking man to be suffering with nervousness, but that's what it is. It's going to leave you now. Go believe with all your heart. That man sitting back there, that dark shadow and that young boy sitting right back there with epilepsy. Do you believe, son, that God will make you well? You going to believe it? All right. Have faith in God and it will leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe? Amen. Glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. Praying for a little boy. No, it's praying that Mexican woman. Praying for a son that's got cancer. Unsaved. If you believe, God will take care of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Bursitis. You believe that God will take care of the bursitis sitting right in front of the woman there that had the bursitis? Two of you sitting together. Believe with all your life, with all your heart, and you can have what you got. Yeah. Believe with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. That boy over there with epilepsy, you believe that God will take care of that? That little fellow sitting on the inside of that boy sitting there? Lay your hand up on him, sir. Believe with all your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of him, Satan. You can't hide, Satan can't hide nothing now. If God be with us, where's his miracle? Sure they are. Yeah. God is with us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is with us. Here's a sign that he's alive. Yeah. The same thing he done before he died. He's arisen forevermore. Now, do you are you believers? Yeah. Raise your hand. Yeah. Oh my. Lay your hands on one another. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the next person. Just go to pray and just pray, Lord God, heal this person. The other person, that's it. Believe now. Oh, Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that the power of God sweep through this building now like a rushing mighty wind and fill all this house and fill this people with the Holy Spirit of power to believe that God still lives and reigns. Satan, come out of this place. Come out of these people. I adjure thee in the name of the living God. His word. That's the word itself being made manifest. The word will make itself manifest in you if you'll believe it. Take away the clouds of doubt. The sun's a shining. The F O N is a shining. His power is here in the room to make every one of you well. Amen. Do you believe? All your heart. Then in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and accept it. Raise up your hands and praise him. Give him praise. All right.